These ants build massive tree forts over 100 feet in the canopy. Welcome to Bug of the Week Part 6. I'm super excited about this episode, so if you enjoy this episode, then consider leaving a subscribe and a like. And also do me a favor and leave a comment on this episode um, with your favorite weird fact from this episode. Um, yeah, it really helps the channel out, and it encourages a discussion in the comments. So, without further ado, let's just hop right into this. Meet genus Oesophila, within the family of Formicidae, or commonly known as ants. Within the genus of Oesophila, there is 15 species of ants, um, and their kind of common name is known as weaver ants. They inhabit the Afrotropics from Sri Lanka all the way to northern Australia, and I'll get into why they're called weaver ants in a minute, but first let's talk about some of the anatomical characteristics that these ants have. Now, most ants have something called major workers and minor workers, so majors and minors. Now, major workers of the species typically measure about 8 to 10 millimeters in length, give or take, and they have long, skinny bodies and legs, which aid them in traversing the canopies as they are very adept arboreal climbers. These ants also have long, dual-jointed antennae, which aid in communication through pheromones, hunting, and as well as nest construction, which I'll get into in a minute. Weaver ants also have large compound eyes, making them highly visual and aware of their surroundings more so than most other ants. They're also often referred to as green ants due to a certain Australian species having translucent green gasters. Unlike most ants, the weaver ant does not possess a sting of any kind although they can bite and then spray a mild formic acid into the bite wound. Now, for the most part, weaver ants feed on small insects such as caterpillars, aphids, leafhoppers, moths, and small beetles. Although these ants are mostly carnivorous, they have also been found to also forage for flower pollen and nectar, which is pretty cool. Now, actually, like all ants, weaver ants have two stomachs. One is its personal stomach, and their extra stomach is called a social stomach. When an ant eats, the food goes into both stomachs, one to fuel the individual ant and one to help feed the colony. Now, the way they use their social stomach is really interesting. It's done through a process called trophallaxis, where two workers will meet and regurgitate the food from their, stomach, from their social stomach into the mouth of the other ant, um, and this helps to feed the young, the other workers, the queens, the queen and or queens, because this species can have multiple queens in one colony. Now, also like all ants, weaver ants use pheromone communication to locate food, water, and new nest building sites. A worker will leave a pheromone trail as they are locating food, which they will follow back to return to their nest really effectively. They'll tell the other workers through their other pheromones and antennae communication, and then the workers use the trail to accurately locate the food source. Now, the amazing thing is that ants can use pheromones in 3D space, also regardless of elevation or rainfall. Okay, now let's get into the really fun stuff, the thing that makes this ant really unique, and that's the formation of their colony structures. So after a queen weaver ant mates, she finds a large secluded leaf and drops her wings. She then lays her first clutch of eggs, and she also doesn't eat anything uh, during this time, as it would be dangerous to leave the eggs behind to search for food. And so because she can't eat, she lives off of the internal wing muscles, as she doesn't really need them to fly anymore. And so she lives off of those muscles. They break down, give her nutrients, and she doesn't eat for this whole time. She carefully raises the eggs on her own into larvae until they pupate and emerge as adult weaver ants. Now this is when she can finally eat as the workers feed her through trophallaxis like I explained earlier. Now this is when the workers use their pheromone trails to locate a new nest site in the lush canopy. Once a grouping of leaves and branches has been located, the ants begin nest construction. Now the crazy thing is some of the leaves that they use can be 10 plus inches wide. And so making that makes it quite the feat for these small insects to achieve. Thousands of ants will gather at a time and will line up along the edge of the leaf and begin to fold and roll the leaf over. 
Other workers then intervene, milking the silk from the larvae of the ant and using it as glue to secure the edge of the leaf. So basically, they use baby ants, the larvae, as glue guns, essentially. With a series of folded and rolled leaves, the ants can then move the colony into their new home. The queen can now begin laying eggs and the ants are always adding new leaves to their nest as they often get damaged in storms or the need arrives for more space for colony growth. So when you see these nests, it basically looks like rolled up leaves and they've got a bunch of silk on the inside and outside and they use that to secure the leaves and make a nest. Now this is the craziest thing about all of this. Sometimes a large colony of weaver ants can reach half a million workers strong and with seven to eight queens sometimes. So they can just keep making queens the queens leave, mate, come back, and join the massive the massive colony. And a nest will span several trees long. And I'm not talking about, like, little tiny trees that you find in your neighborhood. I'm talking hundreds of feet in the canopy. And these trees are 12 feet in diameter. It's insane. They're massive. And these trees stretch 100, 200 feet tall. So these leaves are huge. Trees are huge, and they can take up several trees long. They just keep building as they expand. Oftentimes, queens won't even see workers from another queen because they're so branched apart from each other. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Bug of the Week by Lil Dudes Insect Academy. And if you did, leave a comment. Please um, subscribe and leave a like as well. It really helps us out. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning about the weaver ant. I know this is definitely one of my favorite species of ants. Uh, super fascinating, super weird and cool and unique. Um, so with that, I will see you all next week and keep on bugging.